Good afternoon, members of Spiritual Equipped Encounters here on Facebook, those who follow me on YouTube, and those who follow my short reels on TikTok under APCS. How's everybody doing this afternoon? I hope everybody's doing great. As for me, uh, did a lot of dancing last night. Uh, you know how the Irie went back, so it was an, an extra hour of dancing, so I'm feeling it today. But you know, it was a good workout, cardio. I hope everybody is, is, is doing good this Sunday afternoon. Uh, you know me, how I like doing my quick live life videos all of, out of the blue. So I figured I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick live and maybe do a bigger live later on. I'm not sure yet, but I just wanna talk about certain things. You know, I've been getting a lot of positive comments on this on the pictures that i place you know sometimes when i place these pictures they're off uh they're screenshots of uh of live a uh, live video you know so what i do when i debunk how you doing sister don when i debunk them i go in there and i go frame by frame like uh that one that it looks translucent uh that's how they are and they come out like that sometimes uh the activity that happens when I'm cat when I, I do those videos, you know, uh, especially in Elms Grove, it's pretty hot and heavy in Elms Grove. The activity there, brother and sisters. When I talk about that, you hear footsteps, like somebody walking towards you, and there's nothing visible in front of you, but you're hearing footsteps coming towards you. That's Elms Grove. Just like the man that got elevated in between the path of Elms Grove. And on the other side of Elms Grove, by an unseen force, he got lifted up in the air, like seven, seven feet high, and got dropped on the ground three times. You know, that's the activity that happens in Elms Grove. And I'm talking out of experience because of what happened to me, you know, when I was fighting spiritually there in Elms Grove. I had doing Sister Renee. When I was fighting spiritually in Elms Grove, those were the things that would happen to me, where... You can hear somebody running towards you full speed, like you can hear the footsteps breaking of breaking of branches and they're coming at you full speed. And and all of a sudden they just stop right in front of you and you're waiting for an impact, you know, and they just stop right in front of you. But you can't see nothing, like, especially at nighttime. Sometimes that will happen during the day uh, where I hear somebody running behind me. When I turn around, there's nobody there. It got to the point. Well, this will, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just saying how I captured these pictures, why the activity is there, because of the things that were, that was happening. This is, we're not going to the woods, uh, bro, uh, brother and sisters, there in Elms Grove. Uh, my intent was to capture what was there, the, what was attacking me spiritually. That was my intent. So, so I could bring awareness to to the people, you know, because I was already getting spiritually attacked in Elms Grove. So I said, well, why not record and see if I can capture something so, you know, people can see, so they can see what I'm experiencing, you know. If I can't see it physically, visually, then I'm going to capture it through the live. And that's exactly what happened, you know. They start manifesting more and more in which I've, I've captured so many videos. If you look into the photos here in Spiritual Equipped Encounters, all the way to the beginning, I got a lot of freaked out photos there that I captured there in Elms Grove. Um, no, I know a lot of people uh, do their works. Me, the works that I do is by the experiences. You know, there's people that they claim that they say that this these beings that I capture, that they're friendly, or that they're hairy, hairy people, uh, hairy like Bigfoot. So I'm, I'm sorry, you know, uh, uh, they, uh, they do have the abilities to manifest, to look like a werewolf, dog man. They have the ability to, to manifest, to look like a Bigfoot, a moth man. They can look like me and you. They have those abilities through their shape-shifting forms that they they have those abilities 
But because they have those abilities doesn't mean that it's really a hairy man or a, a cryptid. Uh, what I witnessed and what I experienced, I'm going through my experiences. When I fought spiritually, uh, they stopped showing themselves to me. Once they got the belief factor, right, for me to believe that what I was seeing was something real. I mean, they had the ability just to break branches, to break trees, you know, and you, you see something big land beside you and you're looking at it, it's looking at you. And it's in uh, manifestation form to look like a, there was one, uh, I don't know if y'all seen uh, the movie Island of Dr. Maru from back in the day. There was one that looked like a hyena, you know, like in that movie that landed beside me and looked like a hyena from the face. And he was pretty tall and it took a running. When he went into the creek, it broke the branches and you could hear where he landed in the water, in the creek, and then came back into the park, and it ran uh, to the other side of the park into the wood line. So, the ability that they have is unreal. You know, when something can manifest to look like something and has the ability to break branches, break trees, throw rocks, uh, you name it, because they're manifested here temporarily, uh, and you're giving it, giving them power because you're seeing it. And you say, "Whoa, whoa that's that's something real." When I started believing it was something real that I was witnessing there in Elms Grove, brothers, it's just the battle that I'm talking about. You know, I see people that they go to LBL all the time. Well, the battle that I fought was from 2002 all the way to 2016. I lived in the area where this activity was happening. You know, I was paying off a mobile home. Uh, once I paid it off, I got up and I got up and left. I I left the mobile home. I just paid it off and got out of there. You know, I moved far away from there. I moved to a different town uh, because I didn't want to deal with it no more. But I battled it. So you know how there's people that, that go to to locations to explore. Well, I lived there. I lived where all this activity was happening. So I would know exactly what goes on there because I lived there. So, you know, it's like uh, I had a, I remember one time I had an open challenge. How you doing, Sister Laura Greenlee, Sister Pam, Brother Alfred, how you doing, Philip, we got Ruben Mireles. When I lived there, I was raising my son by myself. You know, the reason, you know, how everything happened is, when my son got alerted into the woods, he was like five years old. We searched for about an hour. We couldn't find him. We called the police. We thought somebody had kidnapped him and his friend, which was my friend's daughter. And the sun was setting already, and I just seen something, you know, because my son was pretty tall as a boy. So I seen the top of his hair behind some bushes in the woods. So I ran towards him, and I found him. That's when they were like in a trance-like state. You know, it's like there was in they were like like uh like in a how should I say like in a trance, right? They're in a trance. So I was, I was trying to get their attention. After a while, I finally got their attention, and the only thing that both of them said at the same time was that man in black calls into the woods. So you know, I took him to safety. I, I called, my yelled for my sister and my friend. They took him. So I went searching for this this man in black or person, right? I couldn't find nobody. Uh, and that's when I went into, I grabbed my gear. I have all my, I have my camouflage gear from the military still. You know, I was already out of the military. So I went full, full uh, combat mode, man. Like I was trying to, to prevent from other children getting lured into the woods or possibly getting kidnapped. So I put all of my gear uh, I had camo, camo, camouflage paint on my face, and I was, I was blending in with the woods. I would go there for for hours in the night, just just on uh, on blackout mode. I, blackout mode means no kind of flashlight. I don't smoke cigarettes, so no lights at all. And I would just go there, blending in the darkness, and just sense, use my spiritual senses, 
to see uh, what I, I would sense or if I could run into this this person in black. But I noticed there was always activity when I was there in blackout mode. Like, for example, you could hear somebody coughing. You could hear somebody laughing in the woods. Uh, there was one time that I was in blackout mode by the edge of the wood line. And I was just scoping at the park to see if I could see any movement. And I was in the woods. And right beside me, I could see something pass beside me. And it was a shadow figure that passed beside me. When, when I mean in common, I was just stationary. I wouldn't move. Like like I was part of the woods, you know. I was all camoed out. And I was started witnessing all these things that were coming out of the woods, you know. And it's like, it was like, like uh, something that was supernatural. So then that's when I figured out that what, whatever lured my son into the woods and my and his friend was not something that was a person. It was something of that nature. You know, when, uh, when I hear about missing children, 401 cases, I know how they could get lured. You know, uh, these beings, they can manifest, uh, pretend to be me or you to lure the children into the woods or they can pretend to be something, right, uh, to lure them in there, you know, just like what happened to them. So that's how I captured all these images. You know, I started recording. Some of the th first times that I started recording there, we got Sister Laura Green, Brother Greg. You know how many cameras blew up on me? <laughs> that literally the batteries would blow up in, the, in, that, in, the, in that area. I went through like around 10 10 or 15 cameras that the batteries would blow up or the lenses uh, the were crack. They were crack. But like any kind of equipment you go take in there, whether it was your, your camera, whether it was a, a voice recorder, it would drain the energy. Energy would be drained completely off of it. Brand new set of batteries. You go there, play it, boom, you're... you're uh, the the energy of the batteries are dead you know uh i went through a lot of cameras there that's why some of the the pictures in the in the past that i had were from old cameras like cheap cameras because the cameras that i had the good ones the the busters i said well, i'm not going to buy invest no more money in buying new, new cameras uh, or, or or new phones i'm just gonna buy some cheap phones and start recording you know and that's what i would do a lot but sometimes the images that were will get there were real creepy that i would literally uh get the the card and just break it in half and get it was you could say you could see the demonic beings in there at that time you know i wasn't really hadn't created spiritual encrypted or positive spiritualist or spiritual encrypted encounters so I forgot where the images that was getting there, where you could see them right there beside me, uh, standing right beside me, uh, these figures. Uh, so then I started, so okay, I'm going to, instead of taking pictures, I'm going to go in there recording, right? And that's how I started capturing all these images. There's times that I would go in there uh, and you could hear growling, like somebody literally growling at me. And I'm looking to where the growl was or my senses would kick in and I could sense like if there was something to the right, something to the left, or if something was behind me, I just move it, move it to the side and point the camera to the direction. Uh, I'll point the camera to the direction of where I'm sensing something or hearing something. If I'm hearing footsteps coming my way, I will point the camera to it. If I'm hearing somebody say something to my left, I'll point the camera to that angle. So that's why I capture a lot of the images because I use my senses and when I hear something or feel something, I'll point the camera to that direction. You know, whether it was on the move, you know, there was times that it would get pretty hectic in there when I could hear all kinds of activity that it's like, it didn't matter where I placed the camera, I was going to catch something because it was so hot and heavy in there. And, and the, I'm talking about the path of Elmer's Grove itself. The path is like an L. You go straight in and you take a lift and there's a canopy of trees that go over like this. And in that area is where it's hot and heavy in, in Elmer's Grove. Uh, 
But yes, a lot of the pictures, brothers and sisters, that I capture in these videos, the, the ones that I've been recently showing is from an old video that uh, popped up on my on my feed that I hadn't debunked yet, and that was from uh, from Elm Grove, and that's where I captured those images that I've been placing there on on, on the group and other other groups that I've been sharing the material with. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoying those pictures. I know. There's a lot of people that tell me that they're they're scary they're scared of what they're seeing and stuff like that. Well, that's just the picture that you're seeing. Uh, I live the moment of what really is out there, you know. And you know, I've, I fought against it spiritually, and I didn't fought one or two or three. I fought many of them because they were coming at me in numbers. You know, when you talk, you hear about the legion, right? That there are many. Or you uh, sometimes on the AVPs I will cash, I will say identify yourself, and they will say the herd, you know, which the herd will be the legion because the herd is the herd of pigs, right? So that's how they will identify themselves to me all the time. Now I don't know about all these other people that said that supposedly the things that they capture in their in their videos are friendly. I don't know. If your experience to what experience is a whole completely 360 that's all I'm saying because what I experienced and what I captured in my pictures and what I experienced was I got literally spiritually and physically attacked by him I'm not saying that whatever you capture wherever you come from if it's pareidolia or it's real or not I don't know because I'm not there to witness it. But if I will go there to the, your area, I'll be able to sense what's there. But what I faced in Elms Grove was territorial. It didn't like people going into the area. And one thing about them is they knew what's in your mind and in your heart. So they know if you had spiritual opening. Uh, and that's how they attack. I had a spiritual opening. The spiritual opening that I had was unforgiveness. There was this person I had to forgive, and that's what they were using to come in up against me. Till I figured it out, what I, I what I did is forgave this individual from a long time ago, when I was like ten years old. He came at me in a negative way, so I finally forgave him. And once I forgave him, you know, all these things that were happening kind of ceased because I, I cut the spiritual opening, you know. Uh, and it works the same for generational curses. You you forgive everything of your past. You place Jesus, Jesus Christ first, and all those all that gets severed. So nothing can. There's no more spiritual openings, and forgiveness is a part of love. So then, that protects you. You got Jesus protecting you. The angels protecting you. Then He blesses you with the spiritual gifts of discernment. But I just wanted to talk in depth about the pictures. You know, the pictures, they're, they're kind of, they're unique, right? I'll just say it like that. They're unique. Uh, I'm not going to say, uh, because there's a, you know, everybody's got their opinion of, of, picture, of pictures that are placed. But I, I lived there, you know, and I know what I captured is something of the spiritual realm. You know, people tell me, oh, they're hairy. I said, Look at them. Look at look at the pictures. Does that look hairy to you? No, it looks something that's manifesting out of out of nowhere. And you look at the face, how they look. You know, they look dem demonic. You know, uh, it was something that was in the flesh that was real. Like, for example, a wildcat, a cougar. You know, I'm not sure with the weapons that I had. When I was out there in blackout mode, that I would have killed whatever was out there. So no, it's not nothing that's hairy, that that's, that's hairy or encrypted. You know, this this things you can't kill with ordinary weapons. With it doesn't matter what kind of high weapon you got, you're not going to be able to kill something that's not here in the flesh. That's in a spirit form. You know, there's no way. You know, it's like. You know, people, you can you can kill a skinwalker. You know, they're they're uh, they're not here in the flesh. They're in spirit form, or a wendigo. They're in spirit form. A demon is in spirit form. 
The only way you can battle something of that nature is spiritually. You, you can be a bad a badass person with martial arts. You can be the best the best uh, expert with weapons, but that's not going to work against them. Trust me. I put up all my gear after I, I witnessed what was happening to me afterwards. They started attacking me. When I started believing that they were real, then they started attacking me invisibly. <laughs> Just like that picture that looks transluent, right? Looks transluent, like there's something there looking at me. Well, they started attacking me invisibly, where I could, it could be broad daylight, I'm walking, and I hear something running behind me. By the time I turn around, I just feel a big thump on my back. I fly four or five feet, tumble the road, stand up with my guards up, but there's nobody around me. So they started attacking me cowardly because they knew they could do that because I left the opening of believing in them, right? Because I thought it was something that was real in the flesh. When you see a big old acorn limb uh, of a... Uh, the oak tree limb break and you see something land beside you I said it's got to be something real you see it breaking the tree line and breaking branches it's got to be something real right once once I believed it was something real then it didn't show me any more manifestation of any kind of sort uh, it started attacking me invisible invisibly uh, like literally making contact with me that's when I, I knew that I was facing something that was demonic because it was in at least if you have a, a, a wild animal coming after you you're able to see what it is that's attacking you and you could do fight it you know if you have a weapon right you can fight it and kill it or you have a knife you can stab it or or whatever you know whatever you got but this thing you know uh, this you know I'll call it a, a, a predator of old because or demonic predator uh it, it did me cowardly it is it knows it knows what's in your heart so when they all came at me they came at me in numbers it wasn't one it was many right they came at me in numbers so how are you gonna fight right how are you gonna fight physically something that you can't see right but at the same time they can make contact with you they can hit you they can hit you hard make you stumble and you get up and come and hits you again but there's nothing around you but they're attacking you that way that's how they attack they they wait for the moment for you to believe in them once you believe in them that's when they attack because you left the opening of belief and when they take the, the beastly form is, is for the fear factor. So if you're afraid of them, right, then they're going to attack. Now, for the people that say, oh, thank you, uh, Sister uh, Laura. For the people that say that, that they're friends, trust me. It's, if it's the same things that I've, I've dealt with, they're not your friends. Matter of fact, they probably got you bonded. And you don't even know it. You know, they already got you where they want you. Believe you believe there's some people that believe that, that there are family of them. That they're families. That they're they're real, they're they're the people that live in the woods, these beings. But you're you because you're believing in them that they are family, right? They already got you what they want you. So they're not really gonna mess with you if they already have you. And if you're given a power by acknowledging them as they're a something real, right? They already have you. The question is, when they get tired of using you, then that's when the things might get worse for you. When they get tired of, of using you, then they're going to come after you. And it might be too late by then because you've already given it not just the belief factor, uh, you've already given it like it's a family of them, but it's not a family of them. The re I'm going to tell you why it's not a family of them. This is for any of the viewers here, and I'm not trying to be mean or nothing. 
They just straight up. It was something real. And everybody's got pets, right? If it was something like a cat or a dog, right? You can pick it up and hold it in your hands. So to these people that claim to say that they're family of Bigfoots or a family of Dogman, pick one up and take a selfie with it in your hands. Pick one up. Pick one up and take a selfie with it in your hand. If you claim to, to say that they're real, they're in the family, that's my challenge from the spiritual aspect to you. Pick one up and take a picture with it. If you, you claim that they're real, that they're families of them, that they're your friends, pick one up. That's my challenge to the, and this is just a challenge I'm putting out there. Pick one up and take a picture with them. Let's see who's the first one that's going to respond with a picture. Oh, I, I want you to pick it up and hold it in your hands. All right? If it's an object, you say they're real, 